the start now, so yeah. Shall I send a message just to see if the, the chat works on the screen? This is not an invitation, by the way, for you. Yeah, I know people that have watched. What's the average age of our audience? You know what the average age of our audience is. The kind of people who, who would have fun going live in the 1980s to snag off five star. You, you're, you're, not, you're not allowed to... Uh, oh, by, I put the word test in my phone and I spelt it wrong and it came up with a swear word. I mean, that's no, that, that's no good as a test, is it? Now, let's see if it comes up on screen there. And if it does, brilliant. If it doesn't, then I've just made all this mess for no apparent reason. Welcome to Rugby League's most professional podcast. It's 4020 Live. It is the... Uh, 11th of March. Um, Phil, did you go meet royalty this week? Or did... No, no, no. I don't move in those circles. I'm still confused because when it said the Duke of Edinburgh was at uh, Henley, I thought, is he? <laughs> but I still think Diana's the Princess of Wales, ah, so I'm, I'm completely lost with these things. Yeah, three, three royal visits in as many weeks. Doesn't matter. You didn't need to be there because you could just have a photo and edit yourself into it, couldn't you? <laughs> A bit of like satire I, there. I do the funny. <laughs> oh, that's, 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 that's the old one. You realize next week it's the tenth anniversary. In so much as that, you know, in, in rugby league as we know, Bradford Bulls. Who do we get a testimonial? I don't know. Well, everyone gets a testimonial these days. I never got a testimonial. You can slag off the RFL and get a testimonial. Or say, <laughs> say COVID's a hoax and get a testimonial. Um, in the old uh, Bradford Bulls, they we were supposed to pretend that they were different, weren't they? But then after a week. They were still the Bradford Bulls and Hunslet and New Hunslet are the same and York and L their incarnation. So despite the fact we've been in a hundred different places, we're, we're, it's our tenth birthday next week. So uh, please send gifts in, <laughs> like like uh, preferably kids. Phillips caramel wafers. Yeah, what or, about the uh, or what are, what, are they? what are they? What are they? Uh, salted caramel whips from M and S. It's their version of the walnut whip. But tell her in North Leeds, can't you? You yeah. can. You can tell <laughs> it was Mother's Day this week, yes, as well, can't you? Is that something somebody to do with politicians? To go, somebody had to go shopping. I don't think the chat box is working on screen, but that's not a problem. Uh, thank you to uh, Carson, if he's here. Paul is here already as well. Uh, welcome to the programme. Another exciting edition, another exciting round of Rugby League, uh, in which more happened. I don't know. Can you remember everything that happened? No. That's why we've got the paper in front of us to remind us. Um, more dummies on the pitch and off the pitch at uh, the Lee Sports Police and in an average mother care, I think. On, <laughs> but I, I didn't see the game because I was working. I saw the highlights afterwards. And, oh, those dummies being thrown by the Leeds players. What's going on? Ash Angeli is the greatest player oh, in the I world. I thought you were talking about a tweet, my dear. Well, and, and Derek Beaumont, yeah. <laughs> tweet of the week, according to the paper. Jeez, it's a low bar, isn't it? It's a low bar. Uh, it's a, and they call it X. Don't call it X League Express. Call it, no one calls it X apart from Elon Musk. So don't. I, I, I would have thought they wouldn't like... <laughs> As Elon must reply to Martin Sadler's tweet. <laughs> Welcome to the programme. Um, what is in your drink today? <laughs> I'm tired. I don't know what's wrong. Uh, I went to St Helens last week for the first time ever going into the actual town of St Helens, which was uh, an interesting experience. A, having dinner in Weatherspoons and listening to people, because you've got people watching, don't you? And that was an interesting experience. Learned some new words. I uh, don't think I can use any of those on the board. Do you do the Weatherspoons challenge where you, you, you know, you... Oh, I should have done, shouldn't I? Yeah, see so, so if you can get free beers if you yeah, publish no, where you are. No, I didn't do that. But I, c- I can't really go to a press conference drunk. Can I? <laughs> How do you know Not that a weather spoons challenge? <laughs> well, I was taken on a date um, a few uh, a few months ago by Stephen, and uh, so he, he, he says, it's my treats, we'll go to weather spoons. <laughs> <laughs> he pushed the boat out, you know? <laughs> and then he sort of was talking to me about this challenge that you could put on social media. It was news to me, but um, we, didn't, we didn't do it. Yeah. Um, so in St Helens... Because I had time to count, went on the train to St Helens, which is a great journey. You get off one train at Manchester Oxford Road, and then you have to get another train to St Helens Junction, which is miles outside of St Helens. Got a bus into St Helens, wandered around the town for a couple of hours, went in all the charity shops, bought two shirts, only two, but St Helens 2000 shirt from the wide to west, eight quid. Wine some from 2010, fiver. So they'll be at eBay this week. In another charity <laughs> shop, they had a Warrington shirt from last season for 20 quid. I'm thinking, who in St. Helens is going to buy a Warrington shirt from Jody one of Cunningham. their non years? Jody Cunningham. I didn't interview her because the media manager at Saint said, Do you want to speak to Jody? I said, Well, I kind of asked her everything I can think of now because we've done a million interviews. So, But she's there tomorrow, so I might I might just ask her something. She's random. My Life in League in the new issue of 4020 yeah, out so, um, this, week. this week. So I didn't need to speak to her about St. Helens paying their women. Much payments. Which is great. Mm. Along with gym membership and food and medical insurance and all that kind of stuff. Um, 
travel expenses from St Helens Junction into the year <laughs> And the, the, the interesting thing is all the players saying, you know, it's on top of all these other things which are more important, especially mm. if you've done your ACL like Leah Burke had done. And she got seen within a week and got it sorted. Whereas if she had to wait, and as they said at the top table, perhaps if you play, and we've seen it with, with players in the Championship and League One going on social media and trying to get funds to do the same. Mm. So... Progress, isn't it? Step in the right direction. Just ahead of International Women's Day. We got the women. Um, the, only, the good thing oh, about the Royal Visit yeah. coincided with International Women's Day. It was all about Women's Rugby League, which again is great profile for a different part of the game, which is what we want. Uh, Women's Challenge Cup starts this week. As pointed out by, I think, Gareth, or, not Gareth, Gavin, Gavin Wilson from uh, of York fame. The York women, the Valkyrie, play on Sunday in Sheffield and the York men play on Sunday in Doncaster and you can't do both. Something we still need to get right, so, a little bit logistic. Because we're not supposed to, everyone's supposed to support everyone in the club, aren't they? So you, if you're a Leeds fan, you can support the men and the women in the wheelchair and the netball and the PDR and, the, and whatever. And they all might, sometimes they might play at the same time. All right, probably not as interested in the netball. Very disappointed, by the way, Ronnie the Rhino hasn't got a netball dress. When he goes to do the, the netball, he's still in rugby kit. That's going to be good. <laughs> I do like the idea that people in Sheffield and Huddersfield are supposed to support the Leeds netball team just because they're from Yorkshire. When everyone's like outside the old, of, the everyone old, outside Leeds hates Leeds. The old tykes, isn't it? That works well, doesn't it? Where, where are they these days? I've no idea. <laughs> what happened to the tykes? I don't know where we're going. Um, so yeah, scheduling. Anyway, two play this week. There's the, been no uh, news this week, has there? The, cup, the cup draws. Oh, the cup draws coming up in a bit. Probably about... Yeah. Half an hour. Stay so tuned we'll, to the draw. We'll keep an eye on that. You can have instant live reaction. Where we go? When um, St Helens go to a championship yeah. team. Warrington play Wigan. Not, not Wakefield though. Somebody gets to go to Catalan at very short notice. Batley maybe. Or Sheffield. Batley's still in, aren't they? They'd be, they'd be witness. Who are Wakefield likely to be playing? No one. Playing with themselves. Um, <laughs> I know. <laughs> Unfortunately, isn't it? I know you're upset, but... <laughs> <laughs> I... I are they in crisis? Yes, definitely. According to Facebook, which, as we know, everyone who has any kind of opinion that is worth hearing from is uh, on Facebook, definitely in crisis. They've already already got the scapegoat for this year, which is good. I mean, I'm fully behind it, but... <laughs> and your cousin good. scored the winning try against yeah, your exactly. team. Exactly, so it's... it's am, am I... It's a conspiracy. <laughs> There's definitely there's a conspiracy. You know, I thought right, I get into I get into broadcasting. I'll be the most famous person in my family. It'd be great. I'll be the top dog. Everyone will think I'm great. Then my cousin comes on. He's good at rugby and he's like played at Wembley and everything. I love it. So I'm like, and then he knocks your team out of the Challenge Cup. My sister won an award last week for the company she works for. I'm like, oh, it's got to be mum's just like, sorry for being a disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> We've all been there. <laughs> <laughs> it's comedy. Just in case someone told me mum now. Um, <laughs> Paul says, views on all Super League clubs having a women's team. Well, they should do something. Mm. If, I mean, and if they do, they should do it properly. And if they don't do it properly, then... They well, there you go. If they don't do it properly, don't do it properly the they end up like Castleford. Yeah. Well. Yeah. I mean, I was, looking, I was thinking about this because the other year I tried to do a league table of the teams who had a men's and women's team together and put it together and here's the overall champions. There's only... Two clubs in the men's, women's, and wheelchair Super League, aren't they? That's Wigan and Leeds. Yeah. Because St. Helens don't have a team yet. I think they were same in wheelchair, club. yeah. Um, and so on and so forth. So Wigan and Leeds can play off for a Warrington trip. I don't, do. Warrington. Oh, uh, Warrington. Although they're yes. not in Super League now. Well, are they? That's the thing. You've got to be in Super League. In a wheelchair Super yeah. League. So, so I didn't want Sam to ring up then and say, What do you mean I'm not in Super League? Who's, who's the big legend between Warrington and Leeds? Uh, Wigan and Leeds. Who's the. Like the big legend of played played for both clubs, so we can name a trophy after that. Dean Bell, Dean Bell. So the Dean Bell Trophy goes to the, the at the end of the regular season, the team with the best, biggest I mean, winning a, record a, between Ellery the two sides. Might, well, might have a say, but uh, the Ellery Bell Trophy. <laughs> <actually is fun. laughs> um, I don't know what's going on. Right, views on all seven clubs on the winning team. Yes, we think that's right, Paul. And they should have a wheelchair team and everything else because that's how we're going to grow the sport. Um, there wasn't. Did anything else happen this week? Or has it been a very quiet news week? No one's kicked off about the discipline, have they? Because there's nothing... The well, discipline we, we doesn't bother We did downstairs. Well, yeah. 
So let's talk about the discipline in a minute. Only two people have been banned this week. That, that's got to be a positive, think, sure. Is it? Oh, in terms of two. the charges, two, two, two got banned. Two got banned, yeah. Four got uh, charged. So hang on, we're, we're four weeks into Super League. First week, everyone gets banned. Fourth week, no one gets banned. Has anything changed? Has something changed that they've not told us? Apart from, as ever. I mean, the big... The one, big... Would, one would assume that we go in early, we go, right, this is what we're going to do, and then... Everyone moans, and then we roll back and go back to bed. Yeah, the big debating point is Jack Ashworth, I think. Because um, it's clearly going to be compared to the New Brown incident in that it's head-on-head contact. The New Brown one, unless I've got this wrong, um, directive came down from the video referee that it was forceful and no mitigating circumstance, so it was red turned out that we needed to change the protocol because it was a secondary contact. Then two weeks later, we get Jack Ashworth going, who I do think has been Hull's best player this year, so it's nothing to do with that, went head-on-head head with a Catalan Dragon player. The word comes down from the video referee as far as we can tell that, again, it's forceful, he's upright, no mitigating circumstances, and he only gets a yellow... But then he goes to discipline and he gets three matches. So something to me seems out of kill today. Yeah, I don't, I don't understand it. Well, if you don't, <laughs> what chance have I got? No, because they talked about, from the new Brown, it was about the initial contact or secondary contact and it was initial contact with Ashworth on that basis. I, again, we don't, I don't know what the framework is. I'm trying to work out what the framework is still, but <laughs> I'm assuming from that that it, it should have been a red card. I don't understand from what Jack Smith says... In terms of your description, why it's not a red card. If there's no mitigation and it's forceful and it's direct head to head contact and it's initial on initial contact, then to me that seems to be ticking all the boxes for a red card and then obviously gets charged grade D which Which would justify a red card. in my opinion it would do. Um in my opinion I don't know how you can have a player suspended for two or three games, depending on his on his disciplinary record, but and then only receive a yellow card, and then that is deemed to be parity. Yeah. I can live with it being a one-match ban on a tin bin, but not. I think once you get to two or three games, for me, that should be a red card. So uh, that would be a question I would be asking. I don't, I don't, I don't know whether that, you know, in this week when they're looking at it as a group of referees, they'd sort of determine, look, we got that one wrong, it should have been a red card. Fine. Uh, I think it would be good to know that, I think. from The from Graham the Amersley uh, comes out after every round in Australia and says, we got this right, this wrong. Yeah. I think that would be useful, just because it's not about knowing whether the referee got it wrong so we can hang him out to dry or the video referee. It's, it's about our understanding, isn't it, of, and expectations, so that when it happens in another week or a couple of weeks' time, we have an idea what it might be. We could go to the minutes. But they're very brief again, aren't they? <laughs> Where did the reams and reams of paper go? We, we have had a, um, an email from a listener and, uh, saying, could we, in fact, um, find out from the RFL why the minutes are no longer published, particularly of things that aren't charged, mm. just so that gives you an understanding, which is what the new transparency we were told was going to happen was supposed to, to give us that Live on. I, I can't understand why we're not seeing the minutes. I don't. I don't understand that they've always. They've always. The minutes have always been quite lengthy. And they've got pretty, pretty long. Pretty long in the last few weeks, and they've looked at every single incident, including those that have been sim binned and red carded on field, and any other incidents that match review panel identify as they're reviewing each game and every minute of each game. So, I don't understand why they've suddenly gone to a system of just highlighting in the minutes or just detailing in the minutes. The the ones that are charged. So, so you, we're seeing, you've got to play we're seeing players sim binned, but nothing happening on the back of that, and no explanation as to why nothing's no. happened on the back of that. You so. just have to presume that match review panel and do not consider it worthy of a charge. So Sangari gets sim binned in the league game. Now that was slightly different because that was for persistent offences. So in the same way as like holding down it, but it was this, it was persistent high tackles and in isolation, not worthy of anything more than a penalty, but cumulatively led to a sim bin. So I can live with that, but to me there should be an explanation of that. Yeah, and absolutely. There always has been explanations of even professional foul sim bins, which didn't necessarily need to be in match, match review panel minutes. So, Well, it stops club chairman then saying that there's a conspiracy <laughs> theory against the... Well, I don't think it would stop that. No, actually it would. 
But I think it would be useful for the, for the public to see the reason why it's not a charge. Yeah. Um, again, just to keep things transparent and help people understand, you know, and I think people get frustrated when they don't understand something. You know, I've seen on my social media sort of timelines people banging on about, you know, the latest charges or otherwise and it's the game getting ruined. Yes, it was a whole FC fan, granted. <laughs> the thing is, they wouldn't but have won that game anyway. I just, I just can't be bothered with it all. You know, it's just, uh, the transparency thing, I'm, I'm, I'm in favour of It's the fans moaning about things which are just... Yeah, well, you'll never win that. But I just no. think if you can be transparent and you can inform yeah. people also, and then people yeah. can understand it, I think, as I said last week, they might not agree with it, but at least they can understand it. So The game is not investable. I need an absolute overall. Uh, now, overall or uh, an overall? overall. No, it should, it, should, it should say in brackets they're sick, shouldn't it? But it yes. doesn't. Um, that's the only last thing I know that really know what it means. On Tempest Fuge, which I don't know if it's made it into the column or not. Um, yes, but, it has. It has. It has oh. um, it's not investable, but I am Those are the two IMG's words that made it into the column. <laughs> is that. But is what? That, it made. Because the league lost. Because the league weapons lost. Look, you, you, when you watch the, the, I thought it was a great league. game, actually. I really enjoyed the game. I watched most of it, but I got distracted in the second half once I knew the score in the St. Helens game, so I switched <laughs> over, thinking, oh, well, this game might be over at Lee. And then he switched back home. Hang, hang on a minute, there's been a few tries scored here. I think there were three amazing comebacks, and arguably the performance of the round probably would have been Salford because they were battling the weight of history. But I have to say, the team that impressed me the most this round were Wigan. Because Wigan, Wigan reserves, almost. They took a very young team to London and looked very much like their first team. The, mm -hmm. the, the work that is going on within that club for um, keep... And, and they, they talk about, don't they, the, the same ethics applying to every level of the club. To draft a couple of, well, one debutant and one who's only played a, a couple of games in key positions and also play a lot of young guys who, who look like they've never not been there. Irrespective of London and what they're doing at the moment. I just thought that, what, that was such a credit to Matty P and his coaching staff. Um, I know that... Um, Mike Eccles was disappointed, I think, with the, some of the defence that, that London put in. And he, he, you know, he said, um, I think in the past uh, they've lost, but he's been very happy with the application. And this one, the, you know, he felt they could have done better. It's been competitive for a while, and then it, and in the second half, was it? Was second, yeah. Second half. But I just think half. that Wigan deserve mm. all the plaudits because they are going to manage their way out of the World Club Challenge, looking at this. Fantastic mm. game on Thursday against Salford, I think that would be really interesting. It's such a short turnaround for both of them that um, that's going to put pressure. But but we're going to, you know, they didn't play Bevan French on Saturday. because He's played for Wakefield on Friday instead. <laughs> you know. the, the way that they're rotating their, their squad, they may well be the team that doesn't suffer a hangover from the World well, Club, and that would be the, massive. They'll have looked at the lessons from St Helens, weren't they, last year, and said, right, well, how do we try and avoid and, that? And this was a vulnerable game. Mm. Uh, potentially but it's, but it's also an, an op a great opportunity for those young players to, to gain experience at first team level um, but know, it's the manner in which they played that it was it's the yeah. seamlessness of it that the the processes that they're playing and the systems and the structures and what's expected of them and they I mean Harvey Hill who played really well in the World Club Challenge when he came off the bench you're looking at him and you're thinking well, how's Ethan Havard going to get back in the team? <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, looking at Junior Nesember, who's been out for a while injured, and you think, yeah, he made a big impression when he played last year, but then we haven't really heard of him because he's, you know, he's, he's, he's been injured. He comes back in and looks exactly like the player that he was mm -hmm. when he played in that cup tie at, at Headingley the other week when uh, I did last year when he when he helped win him the game, and and you just think that is, you know, Jack Farrimond, who made his debut in the halves, was just a really confident player. Mm -hmm that has been so well coached that you just have to take your hats off to people like Thomas Lulois, who've clearly done a lot of work with him. Um, that it Bodes well for the future, doesn't it, for, for the club? And I think that season. went under the radar a bit, because yeah. we did have three really good games, but actually in terms of a performance, that was you know, real hats off stuff. So why haven't other clubs got the same theories of, Wig of that Wigan 
I think it's partly, it it's partly to do with the talent. You've you got, you got to have the, the players. I think they've used some of their young players really well, sending them out to get experience yeah. on dual registration. They're, they're probably the one club more than any other that where dual registration has worked. So you're looking at Zach Eckersley, who scored a try off the wing. He, you know, he's, he's done, I think, at least two clubs on dual reg, but he's come back looking the part. Um, so they obviously look after their players when they, they do send them out. They just don't sort of mm. forget them. They send them to places where they think they're going, mm. going to develop and under coaches that they know are, are going to work in a way that they want them to work. But they're also the players themselves seem to be very patient because they're waiting until they get their chance and their value is going up. And when you look at some of the players who they've moved on, like, say, a Jake Shorrocks, they're also providing players now for other teams who are at a level above. Mm. It, it's... Um, it's an absolute credit, and I think that, that's one of the strengths of Matt, Matty Pete that probably isn't talked about enough. Yes, in, in just over two years, he's won every major trophy with the team he coaches, but there's a pool of talent there that's going to maintain that. But it costs money, doesn't it? And you've got to invest money in the right locations, and some clubs are not able to, to, to balance that. You've got to see that. the value of it. Yeah. Um, and again, you know, the choice may be, do we get an overseas player and pay them all the money, or do we put it into junior development and sometimes it is that either or situation and we're going to have clearly got the balance right and um, I, I, I do think that's partly come under or been enhanced under Pete mm. I think they've always done it and they've had coaches that valued it but he has come through the coaching system of every part of that club mm. so he knows the value of junior talent and how to nurture it and bring it forward um, and they just looked so cohesive but they shouldn't have been, and and that's why I, yeah. There's too much, too much rugby on that because you can watch it all. But it was uh, it was a performance where you could just have, you know take your hat off and admire. Mm. Um, are we entering? Says Paul. Wigan now taking the mantle of Saints. They're going to win all the grand finals now for the. I, I, I don't think you measure it like that. I think you measure it by looking at the kind of players that they're bringing in, and you just say, the job that they're doing means that they will always be competitive. Now, whether you win a grand final, whether you win a World Club Challenge, whether you go to Wembley or not, there has to be an element of luck in that, in that you're going to get injuries, when are they going to come, who are they going to be to, the season is so long, we're playing in different conditions now to what we might be playing in in two months' time. There's All of that you've got to factor in that affects every club. I mean, Saints last year ran out of some key players. It didn't mean they were a bad team. It, it just meant that at the time they needed their... Uh, Warmses and Parses out there, they didn't have them, and it may happen to Wigan. I, you know, you, you want to see every team at full strength every week, but what you do know is if they can produce a result like that, having played in such a high intensity game and gone to a potential uh, banana skin but looks so good, mm. it augurs well for uh, uh, yeah. Matty P hates the word dynasty, he said that's not something you can confer as it's happening, it's something you look back on, and it may well be that. Yeah, you know, they are the next team that will dominate, but I'm not sure that even they look at it like that. He keeps using the word improve. Well, what he's got is some kids who have definitely improved. Ryan Hampshire played. Who? How often has he played first team in for Wigan in the last couple of years when he's been back there? A handful of times at most, but he looked like a guy that was able to run that game. Which he, and he also knows that next week when Bevan French is fit, he won't be playing. Mm. But it worked. Lots and lots of comments. You can see them on screen now because we've got the chat box working if you are watching live. If you're listening to the podcast, you can't see them. But, um, you know, until they invent a uh, video podcast, which will be a disaster because they'll be full of famous people. Um, away from Wigan for the minute, and the Challenge Cup draw is coming up live. Don't turn over. Um, we'll bring it to you. The, um, as Paul mentioned earlier, the, the, oh no, Kevin mentioned it, sorry. They're well keen on buying Super League still on the NRL channels. There's no smoke to this fire, is there? This is no. Manny Johns has said something. <laughs> Now, I don't know much about journalism, but usually you need two sources to corroborate a story. And this is just, Matty Johns has said something, and then the, I don't know, and at least had the gutter press then, because I have to edit myself. But the gutter press in rugby league, just take it as a, well, he, he must be right then, because Matty Smith has said this. And not Matty Smith, Matty Johns has said this. Matty Smith has said that. Matty Johns has said this, and he played for Warrington once, so he must be right. The, the NRL are going to buy Super League, which is something I'll point out. How do you buy all the individual clubs then? Which they don't, they don't need to buy it. We just need a synergy between the two competitions and there is a willingness to look at that. Now, whether that's one game, whether that's um, enhancing the international game to raise the standard. The, the one thing that the NRL will do 
is anything that makes them money <laughs> or improves their... Like they're, 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 they're not altruistic. In that they want Super League to be um, strong because we've got, we made an excess of money last year, so you have it. They're not a charity. What they want is more of our best young players to be playing mm. in their competition. And one of the ways of enhancing that is to make sure we're still producing the best players. So there's got to be something in it for them. They also know that... Um, there's quite a refreshing change in the way they're viewing the sport. In They have got an expansion mentality at the moment. That's driven by Peter Volandis, but he's realised that there's a finite amount you can do in a limited market. And the eastern seaboard of Australia is where they're absolutely dominant. But at some point, you have to move into the Pacific. You have to move into America. You have to colonise the rest of Australia. Um, colonise is probably the wrong word. Um <laughs> But you know what I mean? They're not in Perth or Adelaide. or So they're looking at Christchurch as well in New Zealand because they want to... There's a, there's a real ground swell of support in New Zealand. They want to bolster that. So if they're doing anything with Super League, it isn't because they want us to be strong. It's because they can get something out of it. Um, and they know that if they put a Super League game or the World Club Challenge in Las Vegas next year or the year after, immediately six or 7,000 more people will go, which is to their advantage. Yeah. So they're not, they don't need to buy it. But we're not in a position to turn down the help that they can offer us. I said the other week, if you, what do you get if you buy Super League? Some corner pads or something. As Kevin's pointed out, I, I mixed my Johns up, didn't I? Because it was Joey Johns, Andrew Johns played for he did. Warrington for three games. And Maddie Johns played, played for, Wigan. for Wigan. And both of them were going to sign for Wayford along with and, uh, John Oliver. But we got Paul Sampson instead. <laughs> um, not that you're bitter. No, still. no, no, no. And Steve McNamara, he's gone on to much success since then. The way from the Ferguson game was like the good old days with mud. You couldn't yeah. see the kits from mud. You know there was a queue for the showers. Do they have showers in Ferguson? They have water, I don't know. Uh, disappointed with the Ferguson crowd, though, I know Wakefield filled their end. Well, I think there was some kind of controversy with the council about how many people could get into the uh, Chris Moyle Stadium on Sunday, and the attendance wasn't given in the paper, so I can't even tell you how many people were there. Um, so I'm not saying about you the loved London it, crowd, 4,116. You, you loved it. The <laughs> return to winter. It was, oh, it's the good old days. It was terrible. <laughs> Ricketts and Terrible. the minor striker. Let's go back I just to turned game. it on. I watched the first few minutes and then it, it, within, I think I flipped back or whatever, went out of the room and came back a few minutes later and it was a mud bath. I was like, just turn it off. It's just a waste of time. <laughs> it, it's not exactly enhancing the skill level, is it? Well, it's just, and they talk about it being a leveller, but a leveller to the point where you just can't really play, which it was always going to be a low scoring game and it just became an arm wrestle. The rook was an absolute mess. You couldn't hold on to the ball. Just, you know, and it's difficult for the referee to referee it because what standard do you apply? You, you can't get a game, really, if you try and be too pedantic about it. So you try your best to try and manage the situation. But it was just, uh, we don't want to go back to that. Of course we don't. Apart from the NRL want us to, if you believe. No, they Matty don't. Jones. They, they, don't. Know, they want it aligned rather than apart. No, I'm sure no, the fans don't want to go back to it. Why? I mean, they were all sat... <sighs> In no, we all understand behind we the sticks, presumably to be undercover as best to be undercover. I it's... suspect it had a novelty value, but it's no more than that. No, no it's not called the Chris Moyle Stadium anymore. I was going to say that. That's some years ago. It's because when it was, I was working on a radio station and we never referred to it by that because okay. obviously, obviously a big rival for riding his FM was Radio 1. Everyone used to listen to it. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone used to listen to it. I've got to put the BBC on now because the draw is going to be made in a moment. So I'll come back to your comments in a minute, but you can still see them on the screen. It'll be made late. Well, I know. It, I bet it won't be so gonna quarter kick, to seven. kick off that it's been made late, and they can write about it in the next with, column. But, with the Estin. Challenge Cup draw. Get rid of those bloody cartoons. They're dreadful. Looks like someone in a Wakefield shirt's there, which is... No, that's definitely wrong. Oops. But, uh, I mean, the, the player of the match should have gone to uh, Louis Smith of the Sportsman. He managed to correctly identify the players despite having no numbers on for half the game. Yeah, there's a challenge to identify which was... Which team? So you're not too downhearted that you've gone out of the cup. I, I want to know where Paul really got this thing about the Louis Vuitton wash bags that the Wakefield players were coming in with. Because if they were, they'd knock off some of the market. <laughs> <laughs> you think we're, we're made of money now. I think that's what he was alluding to. Does he to. think Mattelis is Sir so Jim Radcliffe or something? In, in some respects, the rest of the championship should be... And they put on warning now. Wakefield put out put championship on warning, says TV pundit. Uh, yeah, I think it's the, for the rest of the championship, that's probably the worst result they could they could have had. Because if there's any notion in the Wakefield players that they were going to live up to the hype and go through the season undefeated, um, that makes training a lot easier this week for the start of the Super League. So uh, they weren't going to win the Challenge Cup. They still will. 
you know, are 80 yeah. minutes away from Wembley, there's a fair chance they'll get there. Bradford will have a say in that, obviously. But um, the 1895 was always going to be the route to taking the club back onto a big stage. Mm. Um, so they didn't lo- lose anything major last night other than the hurt of a local derby. But it's, it's the we all hate cast derby because they, they don't really hate Fev and they don't really hate us. But they now go into the league season more fired up than, than the Bra- ever. The Bradford semi-final is the only game I want to win. I'm not bothered about any of the games up to that no, point. It's, it's great they've got a sell-out on Friday night for the yeah. first league game of the season, also mm. against Bradford. I mean, that that's a great step in the right direction. Interesting. Um, I think, judging by the viewing figures yesterday, about 10,000, 11,000 at peak watching on YouTube, which means there's obviously an audience for rugby league outside of Super League. The championship starts this week. No TV deals. We were promised the deal in the lead up to the kickoff. Well, we're well, not yeah. promised the deal. We were told that the they were hoping to announce. The Via Play still exists. This is the problem. Via Play are still on uh, because the Ice Hockey Challenge Cup final is this week on Wednesday, and they've got the rights to that. So Via Play still exists. So I don't know when when Premier take over or what's going to happen, but. Why aren't any of these games coming? Well, Friday night, well, Friday night's not a perfect opportunity, is it? Because that's a bad time to put a game on, on YouTube for free when there's games on the it, telly. It's but not what you know. It's a I mean, sell-out again, game at Bellevue. Why not, isn't that not being a great somewhere? night to kick off the season? Really, no, when you've got three Super League games mm. on at the same time, and Sheffield versus Toulouse is on as well. Yes. Right? So, so you know, but if if you were uh, if you were Matt Ellis now, you'd be thinking, "Like, we make a few more quid." Well, they can bring out loads of shirts because that's what the clubs do. Stream the game. Stream the game. Mm-hmm. Sell out crowd, stream the game. Charge people a fiver. So I'll be doing I'll be looking into that all week. And they might announce that. But they might. This week. It's like when, um, <laughs> when I was at the club and we tried to stream a friend against Huddersfield. Not not visually, just audio. That's why it probably got set. So apart from Wigan. Apart from Wigan. And um, apart from uh, and apart from Huddersfield and Castleford, so and apart from Catalan and Hull, which we'll no doubt talk about a little bit more, it was comeback week. Mm. Three games with astonishing comebacks: uh, Warrington, Leeds, and uh, and Salford, which is what we all want, isn't it? We do, yeah. Every minute matters. Well, well you mean. can't turn a game off if you, if it's going to change. I mean, was it? I mean, Leeds whole... were so far out of that game, and I just didn't see Thursday night's game. They were so far out of that game, really. I know they weren't on the scoreboard, but they just didn't play in that first half, really. So it's amazing although how you the, can turn it around. Although one thing they did do in the first half, which had an implication in the second half, was that they constantly moved the ball. Mm. They ran around. Uh, they made the Lee forwards run around a lot in that opening forty minutes. And the bizarre thing about Lee, and they did it all last year and it worked for them, is they delay their substitutes coming on. Mm. They, they play with the same, um, the same pack for, for over half an hour before they make a change and then they normally don't bring on one of the players who's been on the bench till about 55 minutes. And you just got the impression being there while you were trying to tend to your knees because they weren't working because it was so <laughs> bleeding cold. Um, Winter rugby, yeah. that they were getting a bit gassed. So even though they were, they were the combination between Gareth O'Brien and Adrian Lamb, Adel Adrian Lamb, Lachlan Lamb was fantastic, and they kept creating overlaps. But their forwards were making less and less yardage throughout that first half, mm. apart from Tom Amon, who had a great game. Um, and yeah, had had they scored to make it twenty nil one, Ash Handley managed to get Myla. Ash Handley, Myla Handley, uh, it's for grazing the touchline. That might have been it. But the fact that 16 leads are playing the brand of rugby that they score once, they'll score twice, they're never going to stop playing. Mm. It led to a really exciting game, unless you were the owner of the club. How was Adrian Lamb's knees? Can he, can he play? <laughs> might need him. Um, so, obviously, you 12 nil up. What's this goal-kicking thing? Also? They've been watching the Six Nations or something. Is, that the, is, is this one of these things where, much like, right, so at half time, lead, uh, lead kick a goal to extend the score, and that's great. Brilliant. Half time, Ron Smith's the worst coach in the history of rugby league. At the end of it, well, Lee shouldn't have kicked that goal, and Ron Smith's nailed the Messiah. This is the problem with instant reactions to anything we see is that it's like the cricket. After the first innings of a test match, England are terrible. 
after the second innings when England have got a lead. England are great, but then England lose. But you know, it's 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 all instant overreactions to everything. I mean, Gareth O'Brien got sinned in for a professional foul that stopped a potential try scoring opportunity, which again I'd like to read the minutes of just to make sure <laughs> that you know that that is the way it was seen and the referee got that interpretation correct. But the way Leeds are playing at the moment, the manner in which they move a ball, you don't want to have twelve against them if you mm. can help it. And mm. so Matt for all his try, which effectively was the tap that turned the, the you know, it's a great dummy, but he went right through where Gareth O'Brien would have been. Yeah. Um, but I, you know, I think the one thing you can say about Leeds this year is that they're going to be worth watching because they're they'll entertain. It was a strange decision, I thought, for Leeds to to, to go for goal at, to make it sixteen. From fourteen, do you not think? Because they had, well, I, I'm well, they would, it would have made 12, just... twelve to fourteen. So they're going for the three score. Yeah, yeah. but they were so on top at the time mm. that well, yeah. I've never said that on goal kicking. There's been some poor goal kicking across the competition. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what's going on with goal kicking? Because Max Jarrett's having a storm in the championship. If you're a whole KR and you're signing everyone from Wakefield last season. It's not the wrong lad. To be, to be fair, it ain't great for on no, the foot I know it's for not, a lot. But, of, um, <clears throat> th th there has been some. Poor kicks. Mm. Yeah. Hulk so, Howe would be ruining a goal kicker. Mm. That's why I said they should have signed Max Joey. Not Sign saying everyone. not saying that they would have um, they would necessarily no. have won. It's on. It's on. Right. Well, we're in your hands. You Number eight, gentlemen, please. I, I'm Justin Harris here. Number eight. That's uh, they've not put a graphic up on screen. Come on, BBC. Number eight plays number thirteen. Do you know what that is, Phil? Uh, Welcome they, to the Dra Challenge Cup draw live. Oh, number okay. 8 is Hull yeah, 13. Number 13 is Salford 16 16 is Wigan Wigan, where are them? Yeah. Right, go on to the next ball Come on, go on yesterday We've caught up with you now well, This is the Challenge Cup draw And it's live They won't let us do these things, this is why Wigan will play 14 14 is Sheffield Ooh. Oh, so there you go, there you go Repeat Mark Aston, 18, drag him out, drag him out, cut final. drag out Mark Aston, here he is. The biggest shock of all time. Mm. Ever. So they're probably saying that. That's, that's what they're saying now, yeah. this bloke on the BBC saying that. Yeah. Saying, oh, you remember that, you remember that game? Uh, next up, number one. Number one is Bur Batley. Batley. The great Batley Bulldogs are at home. First ever Challenge Cup finalists. Yes. At the, uh, at the Mount. In 1897. Bur versus. The Gallant Youths. <laughs> the Biscuit Eaters, two. Oh. Kirk Castleford. Cast oh. oh, shocking the mate. Craig Lingard Derby. Craig Lingard Derby. Yes. Look at that. He's under pressure already because <laughs> they haven't won a game yet. Uh, next up, 10. 10 is uh, Lee there. Leopards. Lee Leopards, the Loppards. So Carol Decker's Scott. got another yeah. game. Carol's got holders yeah. against. They've got Adrian Lamb on a video link um, looking like he's being held hostage. Probably by Derek. Uh, <laughs> number four. Number four is Featherston Rose. Ooh, that'll be violent. Lee and Feb. MRP after that will be great. Uh, next up, it is number nine. Lee Rhinos. Lee's right. At home. Hot ball. Fix. <laughs> Fix. <laughs> Redraw. St. Helens. He's not dropped a ball yet, hasn't he, Yeston? So he's doing well here. Uh, number 12. Number 12 is St. Helens. Hey! Oh, I got it right. And there isn't. <laughs> Fix. <laughs> you, the bizarre thing about it's that not is. Telly. It's not on telly. No. Leeds play St Helens on Friday. Oh, they yeah, will now play St oh. Helens the following Friday. Oh, 15. Dear. Who's 15? 15 is Warrington. Warrington. We're good. Sam Burgess is Warrington. No, we are out. They're already oh, in. Of course. They play Sheffield. Yeah. They can't come out twice. If they come out twice now, we we're in wrong. trouble. 11. 11 is London Broncos. Oh. No, that's not interesting. Who also play each other this week. Oh. <laughs> oh isn't it? Oh, isn't it? Oh. It's a stinker, isn't it? Come on, yes. Just do a redraw. They should be allowed to just say, we'll do it again. We don't like this one. Six. Six is Huddersfield. Huddersfield. It's a big crowd at the uh, McAlpine. Well, if it's number five, Smith. it will be. Da, 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 da. I don't even know how many left. Seven. Seven. Seven is Hull. Oh. Hull. K Hull. I thought we'd had I thought Hull. We'd have, we'd have oh, the Hull K were out first then against whoever it was. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> this is why we're not allowed to do draws. <laughs> five. Five is Halifax. Halifax. So Halifax are around at home. Yeah, well, that's good then, isn't it? Uh, and they will play. Riveting podcasting this. Three. Uh, Catalan. Catalan. I'm going to put this out as a video. <laughs> <laughs> now I've moved the graphics. I think that's it, isn't it? That's the draw. That's the draw. It's the draw. 
draw. So none of the games are on oh, the main no. TV channel. No. Are they not? Leeds, Leeds no. against the Saints. So Leeds Saints is not going to be on the major BBC channel. Wow. No, because no, we've got the Super League on there now, so we don't need the Challenge Cup. So Hull KR Salford, Wigan Sheffield, Batley Castleford, Lee Featherston, Leeds St Helens, Warrington London, Huddersfield Hull, Halifax Catalan. There you go. There are some interesting ties actually. The Batley Cask is an Hull, interesting Hull tie. Hull KR Salford is an interesting Well, tie. I'm sure the sportsmen are showing, I'm sure they'll stick one on the red button as well, won't they? So. Lead Saints is going to be on, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And then you would see. I wonder who the. Uh, who would the sportsman pick? They'll pick a romantic tie, Batley Castleford. Mm. Batley Castle is certainly an interesting one, isn't it? Yeah. We go back to Twitter. Uh, our, our comments, see what people are saying. Particularly because it's at ba- uh, Batley. Up the hill, all that kind of stuff. Get the hose out on that pitch. Yeah. 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 Uh, why not on the BBC? So the camera just part of the new deal. There's no sixth round game on. I assume it is something to do with the fact that they're taking Super League games as well. But about time Saints had it hard, says Kevin. It means it's a what, Leeds. We give it, it depends what, what. See now what happens. Whatever happens on Friday, when we come back on Monday, we're going to say this is what happened. Result, which means nothing about what's going to happen on yeah, the weekend. Absolutely, it's a strange decision though, the BBC, because you're going to all they will have is a quarter semis and final. Yeah. Yeah, there's not much momentum behind a competition. I mean, I get that people increasingly like I went on the red button this weekend. There are more and more sporting events on that. And red you'll, you'll, they'll have the highlights, yeah. so you know it'll clearly be on the website um, that evening or whatever. And, and then the following round when they do have live matches, they'll still have that coverage. But you would have liked to have thought it was the old Saturday afternoon grandstand uh, slot, wouldn't you? Yeah. With the with lead Saints from Headingley would be. Uh, Will be a great watch. It'd be interesting to see when they play those games as well, with them not having a, a main. Mm. You know, mm. Presumably, the BBC can't now dictate when they want any of those games. The clubs will tell them when they're playing. Yeah, but like a twelve. Well, the you what, what, what was the Swinton Sheffield was twelve o'clock on. Well, but yeah, you're right. They can do whatever they want, can't they? Um, James, did you see the uh, Duffy incident? Ref contact worthy of a ban. Other, it, was that, it can't have been that other. That, 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 that was Thursday. The game was on. Thursday and I forgot there was a game. <laughs> right. so, Professionalism. Yeah, no, I was being interviewed for an, another podcast, yeah, saw, a rival yeah, yeah. podcast. Really? Yes. As I said before, there are no rivals, only in theory. Well, correct. Yeah, yeah. No, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> uh, that, uh, so that, that took precedent. And then it was only after that I thought, oh, there was a game on, wasn't there? It's, I looked and like I missed a really good, good one. Game. It was a good yeah. game. The Nobody was complaining about the referee. changed hands five times. Yeah. Warrington showed some resilience that perhaps they wouldn't have done this time the back end of last year because obviously they were brilliant the first, the first two months of last year. Um, and Dufty's stats were fantastic. You know, Ran over 200 metres, scored what turned out to be the winning try. Isn't a guy you'd want to kick to and, get, and, and, and not chase hard on him. Um, and, you know, George Williams... Was back and and ran the show, which was which was great for Warrington. They they've definitely got something. Paul Vaughan's in the kind of form he was at the beginning of last year, rather than the end of last year when he when he'd suffered an injury. So I think you, you listen to Sam at the moment, and he knows this isn't telling him much that he's going to make sure that they finish the season with a load of silverware. It's just that he can see some of the changes he's tried to implement are starting to happen, and. Uh, but a disappointing start for Hull KR, really, to the season. I think that, think that was an interesting test for them. Mm. That um, you know, that, those are the games they need to win if if they are going to progress from where they were last year. And Salford away and, and Warrington at home. Mm. Yeah. That consecutive defeats against teams that are going to be there or thereabouts around them in the table. Um, yeah, you're going to think they're going to need to win them. But uh, can we um, read anything to the league table yet? No, when, not, when till, not, to least. not to least. Not to they're away at Huddersfield, Hull okay, KR this week, which again, I don't, I, I don't know what to read into Huddersfield. I, I'm not going to detract in any way whatsoever from putting fifty points on an on an opponent. Um, but what was it four tries in the last ten minutes? Cass, mm. even Craig Lindell admitted it was a bit of a capitulation. Yeah. Mm. So I don't know how good Huddersfield are. Um, well, it'll be an interesting test, but that say, will I be a good this, game because yeah. Hull okay, KR need to get back mm. on their horse. Mm. They're only, yeah, I mean, with with those points conceded as well, and obviously London were expected to be where they are at this point of the season, they're only uh, 20-odd points difference between them in terms of the uh, 
points differential between Castleford and London at this point. So that those late scores, I mean, who knows what the table's going to mean come the end of the season, but that is a strange thing, especially with all the positivity that's been around Castleford in the last few weeks about how they're playing and the way that they haven't been picking up wins, but they seem to be working together and this and that and the other. So for that to happen, again, I've not I, seen the I think that there's a huge wide. difference in Cass being at home and losing in the way they did to Huddersfield and London being at home and losing in the way they did to Wigan, mm. although the scores would indicate it was equally as emphatic. There was not enough desperation from London, but there was a clearly a defensive togetherness. That, with the greatest respect to them, and they know this, they're emerging out of a championship team. Mm. So some of the players they've got, even though they're playing some Wigan reserve players, are not quite at that level yet. They need to play in Super League for a couple of months to know what Super League is. And it's the old story in sport. If you're in a lower division, you make a mistake, you tend to get away with it. You play at the higher division, you make a mistake, you miss mm. a tackle, you don't read the, read the defensive line properly, you're going to concede. Um, whereas Cass, listening to Craig Lingard afterwards, there was a huge disappointment that that competitive element seemed to disappear. Um, and the Wi-Fi is not working. Like John <laughs> Davidson, he wasn't happy. <laughs> And, a, and again, and a stick for the Cass fans. He took the stick away from me this week. So gets gets easy for Cass because they go to Catalan this week, which again is probably not a game that they would have wanted. It. See, now every game is on TV and every mistake is amplified, whether it's player or coach or don't want to say match official, but match. And, and I think you can kind of compare Hull KR not putting, you know, put not putting that Salford game behind them and and coming back and making a statement of intent with what Catalan did because it really wasn't pretty. It was played in torrential rain in, in, and, and Hull were better defensively but Catalan won mm. and, and they found a way to win and they, they were patient and they dropped some ball because of the conditions which if it had gone to hand they'd have scored at least a couple more tries uh, but you know they suffered defeat went back and reset Hull KR suffered defeat went back and I would be disappointed I think that they, that they had that game won uh, Mikey Lewis was great, but great in defeat is not the same as being great. They're in danger, I suppose, if they lose this week against Huddersfield, they're at home. If they lose against Salford, which they did only a couple of weeks ago, then they're out of the cup. And, and then suddenly, they've got the whole derby. Yeah, the, our focus is then on Super League. So it's amazing how things can suddenly, oh, you know... Which is great, and which is why you can't read anything into any individual result on any given week. Um and, and we've just seen the first round of games in, in the NRL and already we're now being told that some teams haven't got a chance and, <laughs> and others are going to win it. Oh, Penrith they? rubbish now, I can't remember. Yeah, they've not scored, so they're terrible. Yeah, um, terrible. And the Dolphins can't possibly do anything because apparently no team who's ever been nilled has won a grand final, so that's Penrith out in right. week one. At least there's some people Don't. watching the NRL in Australia as opposed to Super Rugby, so that's, uh, that's a positive. Why are our improving week on week, says Kevin? Uh, let's are. see if we've improved enough to compete in the players. If we make it, we should do. Ooh, and, and the, the big test for Warrington will be like it was last year, that when they played Wigan in the Cup, that's almost when their season started to unravel. They'd, they'd had a brilliant run in the league, perhaps hadn't been tested quite as much as they needed to be to play a team like Wigan in the Cup. Had that extra man, but couldn't make it pay. And from there, it was almost like the spiral downwards was quicker mm. than the one upwards. So they're going to come up against a a team soon where they have to win to either prove themselves that they that they, they can be better than they were last year or it'll be a cup tie and then we'll know how good one it's now. But yes, every week they're getting a little bit better. Showing fighting spirit says Kevin that they wouldn't have shown last year. So the question is why didn't they show it last year and why are they doing it now? But maybe that's all down to the coach. Maybe maybe we'll never know the answer to these questions. Um you say it's, it's a long way away, but it's like I've been watching repeats of the Crystal Maze, and as Richard O'Brien says when they when they go into the room and says, "We've got two minutes," and the team outside says, "Plenty of time." The grand final will be here before we're out. We'll get old trap and going. <laughs> you mean you'd be oh, screaming was, at the window, was, lifting yeah, the Hessian yeah, and yeah, shouting woo. through the window? Yeah, ten seconds. I, I, it's very cathartic sitting there in, in front of repeats of something from thirty years ago, and thinking all these people are idiots. I've always wanted to do Crystal Maze. I know you can do that in Manchester. That's, you can. Yeah, we need to do that. Do we need to contact the Crystal Maze and say? Can we do it for free? Because we're yeah, it influencers. Yeah, absolutely. And we just mentioned you. Yeah, yeah. influencers. Crystal and we'd Mays, love to do it. What by and all that kind of thing. I'm, I'm slightly worried that Kevin has read my column already because he does mention uh, when the games used to be on Grants and the old cherry picker cameras in the corner. 
which oh, is getting on. Yes. But that might not and be the, the camera shook in the yeah, wind. Yeah, that might not be in the cold. So. Well done, Kevin, for mentioning that. Is the music under royalty? Because that, well, uh, that, th- that was a theme tune. Well, the grandson, that, well, I've probably said, you know, when the Queen, you know, it wasn't the Queen anymore, we should take re- do that as a national anthem because if you sing God Save the King to it, it does fit <laughs> and God Save the Queen in fact so right. just in case we need it in the future but yeah the, the theme from Grandson is is the the greatest TV theme there's ever been but it's uh, not sports uh, report is it it's not sports report mm-hmm. but then sports report is not sports report anymore either no but it's still got the theme yeah. um, Wigan just to go back to the Challenge Cup draw so we saw what they did against London last week you said this is great because then they can so now they play the Super League game this week then the challenge cup, they can just stick that team that played against London out again, and the, the as I say, star players, but the, the first choice players get another little bit of a rest. They've managed this re- this really well. And again, we said that there will always be an element of luck into mm. success. So getting Sheffield at home, you can do that. Getting St Helens away, perhaps you couldn't have done that. But mm. we're not going to do what's your favourite thing, Jim, because that's. We'll save that for a week when nothing has happened. Not that really much happened. That, that, that's on, oh. along the lines of biscuits, is that? Biscuits. Isn't it? Sure. I'm, I'm a, I should apologise. I've brought some uh, St Helens milk chocolate rugby balls. Ah, OK. <laughs> I had to kill some time to go to the club <laughs> shop on, on Wednesday because there's nowhere to sit in reception because it was full of students. Full of students. Um, so, Castle and Huddersfield. We've done, have we done Super League pretty much? I don't, I don't, is anything... Oh, Saints. If we don't mention St Helens, we get Salford. We'll get all the Salford yeah. fans. We'll we'll be on complaining because they've made history by winning a game they've won in the past before. Um, but, they not for, always, but not for a very long. Forty four years. They haven't always been in the same division as well, which is another thing to bear in mind with this. But they won at St Helens. I'm not. No, hang on. I didn't hear Paul Rowley when he was talking about Louis Vuitton thing saying, "Well, the pitch at, Salt, at St Helens is crap." You know, like Lee said the other week. So, it's, how strange! How strange. Turned on a sending off. I don't think there's been any argument that it was the right decision. Um, Percival's got two games. That would vindicate the referee. Mm. Um, and a wonderful pass from Tim Laffey for the winning try as well. Lovely flick pass. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, but I get the fact that Salford have now won three on the trot when people were saying, oh, the squad's thin and um, it's going to be a long, tough year for them. Look at the results that they've had and the manner in which they've played. And the one defeat they had was by a score. Mm. Um, they are the success story in the opening few weeks of the uh, four weeks of the season. I think that what they are doing there is astonishing in terms of making the best of what they've got, and that can only reflect well on Paul Rowe. Everybody was saying, "Oh, you know, he'll get fed up and he'll walk away." And no, just give it, give him a team that. Um, Need a reason to perform, and he can find it for them. He 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 is. Uh, they well. They're he's co- coach of the they? month if we were to mm. award such yeah. a thing. No, I went to uh, with the Peters, didn't it? I'm certain. I, I, I'm sure there was one. <laughs> he is coaching, them. and he's beating good. You know, he, with the great respect to the teams at the bottom, he's beating the teams at the top. I can't remember the games they played. St Helens, <laughs> South, uh, uh, OKR. What was the other one? They lost at Leeds in round one. Yeah. What, I can't remember what the other game was. I've forgotten. Are they only... Oh, yeah, it's Leeds that's got the game in hand. But no, they, they made a really good start. But mm. I, it actually doesn't surprise me in some ways, though, because they, they, they always play you know, with such togetherness and spirit. And, and they, and and they attack, not... attack first. And, and yeah, the thing is, attractive. to be doing that in this weather... Mm. is again to their I think they've got to obviously try and avoid credit. as many injuries as they possibly can yes yeah. they, they've got a, a, a fairly light squad haven't they and, and with somebody like Mark Sneed in this weather you do have the general that can get you to where you need to be kick the penalties if you need to um, slow it down if you have to but he, he is exactly the halfback you want mm. at this ta- time of the season. I'm not saying he ain't going to go on and you know, win the Lance Todd Trophy in the glorious sunshine of Wembley but at the moment if you're going to play the kind of rugby they want to play, you don't want to be playing it necessarily near your own post. You want to be getting yourself up the fit. And he is brilliant at doing that. So uh, they're, they're, they've been fantastic. And Nanny McDonald has been a, a, a great signing for them. Things are going in the right direction. Just don't let him go on holiday. No. <laughs> Says Phil. I assume we're about Salford. Especially now the deal for the stadium is sorted. Yeah. Yes. Well, and they've been given £300,000 to tide them over. So all of that talk at the beginning of the season about how unstable club were. How do they cut their cloth accordingly going forward? 
Well, well they're, they're going to get. Contracts. I think the deal for the stadium is going to include they're going to have revenue streams. Mm. So, so you get more people in, so they can sell more burgers. But also, it, it takes that pressure off directors like Paul King, who've you know put their house up as collateral. If they can, if they know that six or seven thousand people are going to be buying beer and food, and that money's going to go back into the club rather than. But how many, how many rugby league clubs are making money? No. Well, <laughs> exactly, exactly. So even clubs that own their own grounds and no. not have, but it's it, all it's, the revenue. It's, it's, it's a massive it's challenge. Low, lowering the gap from. It is, it's, but it's not. It's not the answer to everything, is it? That's what I'm trying to no. say. That they'll still have to put money in, and it's you know, it's a better situation. Don't get me wrong, but but I think banks and um, funders are more prepared to come forward if they know that there's less of a risk. So. Yeah, there's a revenue in, uh, stream. Um, Rugby league's not investable. And also, if they know that um, they're, they're going to be at that venue f- now for however long the, yeah, the next lease, for a longer is, lease aren't they? Yeah. then sponsors will come on board mm. because there's that degree of certainty around mm. the club. And, and if they're going to play like that as well and be towards the top of the, the league, then th- there are going to be people coming along and wanting to sponsor them. Well, the thing about London, which I don't, mm. I can't remember if we mentioned last week, was getting a sponsor like Brewdog in the knowledge that everybody said, well, what's the point? Because they're going to get relegated. Mm. That's, that's massive. That, you know, that's a major drinks company that is prepared to invest because... Even if they're only in Super League for a year and the deals for a year and on the front of shirts of the year, it's almost been worth them being in Super League for that. And Salford now can go and say, right, well, we've got a stable club. We we know where we're going to be playing. We've got some decent players. What we need is, can you give us someone to go and buy four more decent players because we're not at our salary mm. cap? And that that is probably more than lowering the um, you know the the deficit that they're, they're going to be trading at. Can't wait for Man United to get a government. Paid stadium. That's gonna be good. the biggest <laughs> biggest sports club in the world. Getting a stadium paid for by uh, by us. Can't wait. Can't wait. Well, where are we gonna play the grand final anyway? The Etihad. Yeah. Etihad. I mean, right. I mean, for the IFL, they can just pop next door. When's Everton's up. new stadium on stream? Is that another year away? I think it's next season. Yeah. Because again, that might be a, a you know destination venue in the central. We talked about St James's Park, haven't they? But I, I don't know. But no, then you dr- you're dropping the capacity then by twenty thousand, aren't you? From yeah, can't remember the past, is it? At, is it 55? Is it? Something like that. But the uh, thing is then, isn't it? The uh, European Rugby Union Cup finals there a couple of years ago, I think. And, and, uh, it's past as low as Manchester City, though, isn't it, as well? But, I think that happens, but, but that will be extended. Yes. Mm. It won't be Ellen Road. No. Home of the After Universal acclaim that Magic Weekend going now, is that? Historic stadium. But still, we'll get more people in the uh, Super Rugby uh, <laughs> Magic Weekend in Australia the other week. Keep, just keep them. Keep, it's, 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 right. it's you great. keep mentioning it's great, isn't things it? I don't. The, the Wallabies. Find them. It's great. That's what, that's what the NRL should buy. Apparently, should buy uh, the, only, the, only, the only thing I know from watching a bit of NRL is now the Wallabies are trying to get out of the Joseph Suwali deal because they can't afford it. Peter Valandis, don't bother buying Super. You can't buy his. Buy, buy them. Close them down. Close them down. <laughs> Raise them to the ground. Which is the um, principle that McDonald's started with. There you go. They bought all the rivals in the towns and closed them down. Hundreds of years of this. No, it's Ray Crock. Pushing back. Yeah, pushing back. Um, so that was Super League this week. I think that's all that happened in Super League. In the Challenge Cup, Featherstone beat Wakefield 14-10 and now we'll play someone I've forgotten. Uh, <laughs> Halifax will play... Uh, Halifax beat York Acorn 62-6. Sheffield won at Swinton 14 12. That was on the day. Featherstone go to Lee. Lee, that was it, wasn't it? Violence. I've kept me uh, low. Uh, Witness 14, Batley 18. So Batley coming from behind as well in the uh, Challenge Cup. Yeah, didn't they score three late tries? Uh, 65, 71, and 76, according to the paper. So, yes. Should clubs now fund themselves to play Wayne Perpignan, says Andy? Oh, dear. Did we talk? We covered this last week, didn't we, Vince, about the. Yeah, uh, I, I think the, the fact that. Bernard Gouache has said he can see why they're being asked to do that. We'll tell you, if you read between the lines, that a conversation has been had about the extra money that's coming into Perpignan that needs to be seen to be distributed. So the fact that he isn't kicking up a fuss and threatening to march all the way to the Etihad and bang the table is that <laughs> there, there is something, there's some negotiations going on behind the scenes where everybody will get something out of the Catalan bringing more money into the game, and it, it was supposed to be a bespoke TV deal. It'll be a little bit, a little bit of that, a little bit of the sponsorship that they've got. It'll be, we're not paying you money, but you're paying more expenses, and 
It doesn't. He's, seem, he's not shy in coming forward to complain. No, it's and he doesn't seem to be complaining about. It. He's, yeah. he, he's talking about he understands. So, what's the French for investable? <laughs> Entrepreneur. I don't. I, I did French for a year, but I didn't pay much attention. So I said before, that I learned more French from listening to Google Edouard, Translate. Edouard Lapaglier than anything uh, anything I learned at school. The fans fear for themselves. Why not the clubs going to Catalan? Well, that's a fair point. I mean, maybe, maybe the fans should, you know, start go fund me. That's what the cash runs, isn't it? For, you know, all that money for... Um, is he back soon? Liam Watts, he must be back soon, mustn't he? And then he would get banned again. <laughs> Championship is back. It's the biggest league in Super League, in Rugby League, and it's not on the telly. Sheffield, Toulouse and Wakefield, Bradford on Friday. Sunday, it's Batley, Fev, Junesbury, Halifax, Doncaster, York, Whitehaven, Swinton, and Witness versus Barrow. We've, um, we've got a new Championship correspondent this year. Because they keep getting they Craig keep... Lingard was yeah, last year. He's, he's, he's doing something else there, yeah. So we've, we've got Paul Cook, oh, who has uh, Paul Cook, yeah. joined York and is a man of uh, impressive opinion, as he showed on Sky on yeah. Thursday night. He's good. And um, we went through all the teams because uh, he, he's not picked where they're going to finish. We've done that because you don't want Because you have to put York on the wall. You don't want it pinning yeah. on the wall. Yeah. And he says, we're going to be relegated. Um, but as we talked about it, and he, I'd forgotten he'd actually played in the Championship when he was with Doncaster at the end of his career. So not only has he been watching it with Premier, so he, he knows all the teams, but clearly he knows you know, how competitive it can be. And just by talking to him, you realise that, that this, is, this year you are, there is going to be very little form line other than you expect Wakefield to win more games than they lose. Um, and as... as he says, and that other people have said, you know, if you turn up anywhere without your A game or your proper head on, there's a likelihood that you'll get beat. And that makes it a great league. Former Wakefield halfback says Wakefield need to get their heads right. There you go. Uh, so it, and he loves Cumbria. He loves going to Cumbria. Thinks they're love Cumbria. real genuine rugby league people. That's the championship. <laughs> league one. What is League One? Hunslet versus Newcastle, Keith Lee Cornwall, Midlands versus Rochdale in the Alexander Stadium, because they're actually in the proper stadium this week. So now everyone who was moaning that they were playing on the park pitch or whatever, now they're playing in the same. Everyone can moan about the athletics track. So that's good. Uh, memories of Don Valley for people. And Workington versus Oldham. M- money bags Oldham. They could, is, it, is it the same for League One that for the Championship? Everything you've written about Wakefield is going to be written about Oldham. Is it? Well, Oldham uh, I think Keith Lee will have a say in that Thank division. You. Um, but I do think that's a real test for Oldham having come off I mean everybody assumed that they, they again with a a part Super League team were going to walk through every game they played and they played two cup games against higher ranked teams of a different division mm. but have not won so now everybody's saying oh well but going to work in some if the weather's anything like it is at the moment that is going to be a really tough test for them it won't be easy uh, but I also think that um, I'd like to round of applause for Newcastle for getting to the line don't, don't and going line, to Honslet. Um, and again, I, I don't know if I've mentioned it, but I think there's a new 20 out this yeah. week. Great piece from Chris Thorman. It's orange. It's Chris Thorman has written um, about why, how it's all come about and why he's positive that they do have a future and that you can't read anything into the 1895 oh. results and that if they were going to pick a group, it would have been all the three teams that they played that they wouldn't have wanted to play. Um but the f- the most important thing is that they are going to Hunslet, and it might take them a few weeks to get their squad. And it, with, he said the average age of his team is going to be twenty. I mean, that's got yeah. to be the youngest mm. squad to ever play part time professional rugby. So it'll take them a, a mm. little while, even in League One, to find their feet. But the fact that they are going to Hunslet and, and they, will fulfil the fixture, are they mainly through their system as well? So, or, or a lot of them are from the. He said that. Um, some of them have come through the scholarship and academy system they had. There isn't a lot coming through the community game that are at that level, but the the area that he's found that they can develop players is the student game. Yeah. Got three very strong universities up there: Northumbria, Newcastle, and Durham. And they, you know, they're bringing players in from that, and they will take a little while to get to that level. Um, but he's, he's doing dual reg with a couple of clubs. As well. I don't know why I'm telling you this, because you won't really be asked. <laughs> he's doing dual reg with a couple of clubs, and he said a lot of people have, a lot of other coaches have, have offered to, to help out. And It's just a great story. Yeah. So uh, I think we should all support Newcastle's journey, not necessarily 
if you're a Honslet fan, I'm not saying they need to. <laughs> but the fact that they're playing that game is is excellent. It's okay because on when Honslet win. And this is no disrespect to Newcastle. When they win 60 70 nil, then everyone's going to be saying, what's the point in Newcastle? There is a, read the article, there is a point in Newcastle. Now, I mean, as much as that game you would think is going to be a walkover, how the hell did Cornwall prepare for their first game? They've had players banned. They haven't played a game well, since they've the end of last season. Well, they played York Acorn in the played, cup. I've played York Acorn, sorry. Okay, well, can last, happen from that? Uh, was there was one of those a, there's a real goes, spat and war of words yeah. between the clubs, but I don't think we've had any fines. As opposed to in the down. NRL when they're sorting out the, if they've got eight game pass. Spencer Lenny was heard early because they wanted to put a line under it and he pleaded guilty and they just went, well, we won't wait till the disciplinary come in now, we'll sort it, there's the reason. Mm -hmm. Roosters have issued a statement saying uh, you know, they're, they're not condoning anything he said. That, what, what a perfect way to deal with it. It was a, the, the whole trial trial was transcribed as it happened so the fans could see on nrl.com and league unlimited what was said by the judiciary as as well by, by the councils what the judiciary recommended recommended an eight match ban he got an eight match ban mm. language and the language and the meaning of words in different countries and cultures and things it's it's a minefield isn't it but there you go the nrl have taken that's what they're doing this is it I, I, I do fear for Cornwall going to Keithley. Because yeah. Keithley are good. You've seen them. I have, yeah. They played well against Bradford. Um, I just yeah. think the games they've, those three games they've had will stand them in much better stead than... One game against York Acorn, which they lost. I, I still don't know what Cornwall are. No. I'm not sure anyone knows what they are, are they? Apart from Ottawa. Which is obviously what they were. Hemel. Hemel. But they've got a vote. So, you know, I'm not. I'm not decrying. I'm not saying they shouldn't exist. I just. I don't. When they get a new stadium, when Truro City get it built or whatever, Cornwall. It just feels like it, it feels more away from us than Toronto because at least I've got a feel for where Toronto is and they existed. And Cornwall's just that bit down the end of the country. You've never been to Cornwall. No, it's too far. Beautiful away. county. I've, 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 I've seen it. It looks yeah, nice. The Cornish past is obviously good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Had them, yeah. The Eden Fudge. Project. It's one of my Fudge. favourite places in the UK. Cornwall. But, Beautiful. I mean, I like the other white, but we haven't put a well, team you put there. referee down. It's a bloody long one. way to go to the game, <laughs> isn't it? Expenses. Did you get expenses? Well, you did when you were refereeing, yeah. Well, I don't know. Did, that include, did, that, yeah. did that include a night in the Penzance Holiday Inn? Or? <laughs> I, don't, I think some of them... Drop I think some of them even flew down, actually, down to uh, Exeter or Newquay or wherever. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I wish them well, you know, I don't... I've not seen them play. I, I, they grow on the crowds, you know, yeah. they get reasonably they get a healthy crowds yeah. from what I understand. And they get media but coverage, which most of our teams don't yeah. get. So. Play, They're yeah. a very proactive media manager. I just, I, I'd like to know what the... Yes, what's, you know. what's the development plan? Uh, the Women's Challenge Cup starts this week, sponsored by our friends at Petford. The Channel Festival starts, and I've got some, I've got some rugby league related horses. Have you? Mm. Which I'll... Uh, Put up tomorrow. None of them will probably win because they're not anything about horse racing. I think about horse racing. I've worked for a bookmaker for 13, 14 years now. Everyone does these Cheltenham preview nights. Nobody buys me. I don't have a bloody clue. <laughs> Pick the one with the best name. Um, but the challenge group starts this week Bradford versus Warrington, Cardiff versus Barrow, Huddersfield, Hulk KR, Sheffield, York, St Helens, London, Lee, Leeds, and Salford versus Wigan. So I don't know what's going to happen in those games, but they'll be. It's group stages. I we'll think the uh, seeded teams, because it's not seeded, well, but no. clearly the, the teams from the high division will we'll win their matches. Yeah. Interesting. And again, it's interesting, you know, talking about how Wigan have played the team they did against London in the men's Super League this week, how St Helens and Leeds and York play. I mean, York especially, because they're playing against their dual reg partners in Sheffield, so they won't want to demoralise them too much. I think it's a great opportunity for the lower-ranked clubs to be benchmarked so it's not a bad thing in that respect but we're all going to expect to sit here next Monday and see some high schools but mm. it doesn't detract from anything one of the things that stood out when I spoke to Emma McManus last week at the Saints paying their women press conference and he said it at the top table as well about the sport needing to drive minimum standards it's not down to the clubs because to an extent so far it has been the sport needs to drive minimum standards. Now, what those minimum standards are, I don't know. But Would it be a room for the media? That'd be nice, wouldn't it? Uh, Rather but, than a Morrison's cafe. 
<laughs> but um, <laughs> but when you if you call the competition Super League and you cut and that is the elite, should teams be playing at community venues in for their home games in the the league itself? And the answer I would say to that is. Because well, that is not super and that is not elite. Wigan's women are opening their Super League campaign at the DW for the first time with a double header with the men, and that's got to be how you. And I know that not every club can play their games no? in the home of their of their men's team. I know that's not always possible, and Wigan have the thing next door which they can play, and that's a perfectly serviceable venue, so that's fine. But you have to show the intention. You may not play every fixture there, but to to kick off their very first game as a double header. It's moving in the right direction, isn't it? When you play every game at a community ground, that's not super. So, but what, what do I know? Oh, I don't know anything. Um, so, yeah, next week's our 10 year birthday. Um, so, that'll be good. Better bring some cake in on the. Got it at the market. Oh, good. We? Got to the market okay. on the way in and see what's, what's cheap. Um, <laughs> I, don't think, I, I don't think there's anything else we need to mention. Uh, Someone's having to <laughs> someone go to referees, I think. So, no, you can read it on the screen if you I'm not going to bother with this stuff right now because I don't think anything particular. No, it's earlier. You can't read oh. it there. It's in black as well. I can't turn the type off. I need to turn it a different colour, but I can't work out how to do it while we're on air. But I don't think we've missed. I don't think anything else has happened, has it? It's been a quiet ish week. Hence why the story from the NRL made the headlines on the BBC for much of it. We need to create our own news. We need to create more news. The clubs I, need I, to create news. That, on what a daily I like basis. at the moment is we're talking about the games. Mm. I think that. You're never going to get the best standard in the early weeks, but there's enough happening on the field. And you know, week one we had record crowds. Week two we had the World Club Challenge. Week three we had Las Vegas. Week four we had three comeback games that people were talking about. We're getting a lot of it right because we're talking about the right things. The only people moaning about stuff are obviously us. Us, yeah. Um, yeah we're because constructive because mode. the game's not mode. because the game's not investable in. But the first four weeks <laughs> I've seen it actually is. Mm. Which will come in, come in overalls next week. There's a um, council meeting, I think, on Wednesday, so uh, I don't know whether anything will come of that. Well, <laughs> Derek will tell us afterwards on Twitter. Uh, what, what, they, what? Is there anything due to be discussed? I, I don't know. What's that going to say? Some more rules or something? No, that doesn't come out of those meetings. No, so. The structure, league structure, isn't it? Oh, mm. oh, league, oh that's always good. Particularly yeah. for Championship and League One. I think that's mm. that needs to be decided one way or the other what's happening with that. It is coming up to the anniversary because I'll, I'll tweet the programme soon of the best thing ever, which was Peter Fox's stick all the teams in their hat and draw the leagues out. <laughs> so that's coming soon. Enjoy that. Um, is Skelly singing? <laughs> I mean, you can find a clip if you want me to. Get Mark in, he'll be too busy. We'd be on top spot. We'd have to pay else. him too much. Oh, is, we can't, you, you, you've, you've read these stories about media organisations, not people that paying people the minimum wage. You wouldn't pay anyone. James, if we're keeping a gun against his back. <laughs> well, we've offered him a salt oh, no, yeah, and they've been, been sat right in front of me all night. It's time to open up. So, thank you very much, everyone. We've got warm up.